so they won't uh, kick. So ikatsar balechayim says that's painful. Hmm. So he says katil nalahu. So then I'll 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 kill them. He really wants them to come to the house. <laughs> he says ikabal tashchus. So then, but that's uh, wasting hmm. if you're going to kill them. Have a kamavatish he was um, cajol, uh, cajoling him. Uh, what's the word? Uh, pleading with pleading him with him to uh, hawking. What is it? Hawking. Like hawking. Okay. Um, Gova to Rabbi Nayo, a mountain arose between them. And Bacha Rebbe, Rebbe cries, If this is how they are while they're alive, after they pass away, you can imagine how great they are. This is while he's alive, he wasn't able to, um, to get him to come to this house, and all these things were happening. Um, okay. Wow. Now, so why, uh, why donkeys are dangerous? Uh, so we're going to go talk about these these um, these donkeys. Uh, however, on the side of the Gemara, I don't know if it's in all the Gemaras, but they quote from the Neidah Bihuda Madura Kama, that where the Neidah Bihuda says that his, he first asked him, he says, I'll. I'll, I'll remove their hoofs. So he says, no, that's Tzar Belichayim. So he says, I'll kill them. So he says, no, that's Bal Tashchus. But he doesn't say, when he says, I'll kill them, he doesn't say that that's Tzar Belichayim also. The need to be the proofs from this that um, when, when you hunting, he, this is a chuva about hunting, someone asked about hunting, that he says that, that there's no such thing as Tzar Belichayim by it. If, you're, if there's any purpose in, uh, no, in killing the animal, yeah, but maybe no, it's no, for no. food. No, no, no. Uh, that, that's, that's another problem. But, but what, he, what he said here, that the predot, anishicha shalayim, vaze, she'el refuah mehem. So, it's a davar shemazik. The davar shemazik is like a malach ha-mavet. The davar shemazik, you can't kill it. There's no problem with it. If it's like a yatush or a nachah shemazik, the predot are also a mazik. No, it's here. It's not me. This time. This time. So, one second. So first of all, there's no tsar balechayim <coughs> on, on, killing a, on killing an animal. Tsar balechayim would only mean if you leave the animal alive suffering. It'll but if you kill an animal, but that could be baltash, by killing an animal, there could be baltashkos if there's no uh, purpose in it. Now there are more rights that, you, that you, uh, it, that's not a minute to go, to go hunting. However, uh, I'm not sure if this is what your baron was asking, but there is a very big question here that why is he coming up with all these excuses? He calls it a Malach HaMavas, and then he says it's Baltashchus to get rid of it? What, what's going on? <coughs> that, that's what you're asking, That's right? what he's asking. So, so um, the truth is, the, the, the Chubas, the, they write about this, and they say that, that <coughs> these animals are not actually dangerous. Every animal is dangerous. I mean, usually animals don't attack. Mm -hmm. Just usually when... Uh, uh, the animal does its work. It does its thing. If people have animals in the house, a uh, dog, uh, they have working animals, they don't attack. But it, what happens is, if they do attack, which is seldom, they, they will attack, so, so normally they, they, it'll, it'll heal. Mm. With this, as the Gemara is going to say, these don't heal. So this is a type of animal that when it does attack, mm. so it, it doesn't heal. That's what the Gemara is going to explain. However, however, the really here is not... Oh, thank you. There's no, um, there's no re reason to, to kill them. There's no reason to no. kill them. So it, that's why it's actually Baltashkas to kill it, because mm. it's a regular animal. Okay. Repinchas Ben Yar was saying that it's Mishamidas mm. Chasidas, that uh, someone like you shouldn't have these animals. Right. Okay. And uh, in their death, if, if this is how they are when they're alive and their death, all the more so, Damar Abchama Barchanina. Abchama Barchanina says, that tzaddikim are greater in their death more than when they're alive. As it says in the Pasuk, they were burying a man. They saw there was, uh, uh, some people from Mayav coming. Uh, and they threw the man into the, uh, the grave of Elisha. And they went. <coughs> the person f f gets flung into a, a grave because the... Uh, the burial um, group went running. Mm -hmm. um, they were fleeing. So his body touches Elisha. 
Vayichi, he gets up, he get, becomes alive. Yakum al Raglov, and he stands up yeah, and he moves himself over. He goes to another uh, to another place. This is after but, but Elisha was buried. Again. He died again. Ah, so the Gemara is going to discuss. <laughs> so who's the Ish? It it, it it doesn't say ish. It's like just one strand. But it says it's a navi sheker. The ish was alive or was he was dead? Was dead. They were ah, burying dying. this person. They <laughs> threw him into the grave. <laughs> That is a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. You see, I got cookie, I got smart. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yeah. Amalei. Amal- no, 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 they, they didn't want to bury him. They were running. Oh, there was, a, there was an the army was coming, oh. and they're in the middle of a burial. So they said, let's get out of here, and they dropped him into a grave. It was Alicia's grave. So he touches Alicia, and he, he, get, he himself gets up, and he moves over, and he, I guess he Why buries is himself Alicia's somewhere else. Because you got resurrected. No, because you got resurrected. The they used to do it. All right. They used to do it in, in caves, open. It wasn't in the ground. Cute. They were kuchim. Yeah. They were in kuchim. Yeah. So I'm a lay rough. Papa yeah, la yeah. How do you know... That tzaddikim are greater after they pass away, just from the story that he yeah. revives the dead. Maybe Vidilma Lakimi Maybe he's coming to fulfill the bracha of Elio, Tiksiv, because maybe before Elio uh, passed away, he gives a bracha to uh, Elisha. He says, Vihina Pishnaim you'll be double of uh, from my spirit. Double of my spirit will be on you. And Elisha uh, revives one person. And, but he didn't. But he, oh, uh, the the um, the Abbas child. The no, re- it's Habakkuk and Navi. Okay, yeah. revives the child, but he never revived the second person. So, so he needed to revive the a second person mm-hmm. to fulfill that bracha, but not because mm-hmm. tzaddikim are greater. Amalei hachi, if that's the case, hainu the Tanya al raglav amad ulebeis lehalach. It says we have a brisa that says he got up on his feet. That means he stood up. But he wasn't able to go home. Why? Because he just died again. He, why, why did he get up? Because he shouldn't be uh, laying next to a tzaddik. He was a rush. <coughs> so he got up to move over, and then he, he, he died somewhere else. So, uh, but he didn't make it home. So that's not going to be considered the fulfillment of Elio's oh. prophecy, to make someone live for two minutes. Ella bema ekayim. So how did, if that's the case, how did Elisha fulfill uh, the prophecy or the blessing of Elio, that he should be double like Elio, it's like Rabbi Yechanan says, he healed Naaman. Naaman was this general from Aram, and like we learned yesterday with the girl um, that suggested to, to go, and he healed the Tsaras. Someone with Tsaras is considered like that. Like Moshe Rabbeinu says uh, regarding Miriam when he is a davening for her. She should not be like that. Why are these animals called yemim? These uh, white mules. Because their fear is put on their creations. Rabbi Hanina was a doctor, said that no one has ever come to me about a, a being um, wounded by a white mule, and he lived. The Gemara says, we see that they live after they're, uh, they're, they're wounded by uh, um, a white mule. Ema v'chayas, and it healed. <coughs> Not referring to the person. The person can live, but the wound doesn't heal. That's what Rabbi Hanina meant. V'kachazina demitzei, but we see that it heals. Dechevan reish karayo kamina. We're referring to the ones that the legs are white on the, on the top of the legs. Okay. So that's why we said, this is what Rabbi you were saying before about that uh, when they uh, that the wound never heals with these white donkey with these white mules, so that's what it's referring to. The Gemara says, "Einayd Mulvade. What's a pasuk? There's nothing but Hashem. Amar Rab Chanina, Bafiluk Shafrim. Even the magic, even the uh, witchcraft. How do we get into that? Oh, it's it's going to come back to this. Uh, it's two statements of Rab Chanina. Mm-hmm. Hahi Itza. There was a woman." That was trying to take um, dirt under the the chair of Rabbi Hanina. She wanted to do um, witchcraft. witchcraft on him. Amalah, he said to her, Shkuli, Shkuli, you can take it. It's not nothing's going to come from it anyway because there's nothing but Hashem. Wow. 
Is that so? Rabbi Yechanan says, Why is witchcraft called Kishuf? Because they can um, contradict what the heavenly court says. That means that they can go against Hashem. So what does it mean, Einaid Bilvad, is nothing but Hashem? They have a say. Rabbi Chanina was different because Rabbi Chanina has a lot of merits. This is a very shver Gemara. Because what basically you're saying is that there is other things but Hashem, but Rabbi Chanina is different. So the Masha explains that Ein Oid, the concept of Ein Oid is only by Hashem. In other words, the, the Kishav can do, can do things, but Kishav is not Ein Oid, because Kishav can always be up, up, upruled, uh, uh, overruled by Hashem. Ein Oid is only Malvadai. That's how, that's how they, you learn it. The, for Hashem, no one can, uh, can overrule Hashem. Kishuf, there's a, uh, Hashem is Einoid. Hashem can overrule it. Vama Rab Chanina. Rab Chanina says, Einoidim Lekivitz by Milmata Elam Kim Machriz and Milmaila. No person bangs his finger below unless it was decreed above. Shinema Me Hashem Mitzadi Gever Kinano. That Hashem uh, um, prepares the, the footsteps of man. Vada Mayav and Darke. A person doesn't understand his path. Or can he understand this path? Amar Rabbalaza, Rabbalaza says, Dam Nikov Maratha Kadam That if the blood is, uh, is, is banged, that appeases as if it's the blood of a sacrifice. Amar Rava, Rava says, Begoidal Yemen, it's talking about the right thumb, Nikov Shaini, and when it gets uh, hit the second time. And that's been, because that hurts much more. Wow. And the blood flows more, I guess, from the right thumb. But who the cause of the mitzvah? But that's only if he was on his way doing a mitzvah. That's considered a an atonement, a sacrifice. They said about the pinchas binyar, of prusa sheina shaloi. He never made hamaytzi on some on the bread that wasn't his. Like in other words, he was never a guest. As soon as he became mature, he would, didn't even eat from, a, from his father's table. Ooh, that's his good son. Table. That's he, good son. He uh, wanted to earn it himself. To do it from himself. <coughs> There's wow. a story of a uh, member of that uh, he was in a Fabrenia. And uh, there was a, a little sugar, there's only slag